Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. My name is Adam and welcome to my fish room. So a few weeks ago I put a video out where I was having a lot of deaths in one of my tanks. Um, my platies I had were dying off periodically within the last two years. Then I had some deaths with some other fish and it kind of got me thinking and doing some research and I had the assumption that I really was battling fish TB within this aquarium. Um, so what I want to do today is I really want to show you guys what I did with that tank what I wound up doing, but I also want to go over a couple comments, one in particular that I found to be extremely useful and helpful, and it's really made me think a little, a little differently when it comes to our tanks, when it comes to the biology with bacteria and stuff is concerned. And I think it could be extremely help, helpful for some of you out there as well that may not know any, anything about this knowledge. So with that being said, let's hit that open and we'll get started. Welcome to All right, so if you haven't watched that previous video, I will link it above, but a quick rundown is basically I had a 29 gallon tank that I turned into a community tank. It previously just housed these platies that I had for a few years in there. I threw in a few, uh, a few rams, a betta, and a swordtail. It was full of shrimp as well. And my platies had been dying off periodically with over the last like two years or so. Uh, there used to be a huge colony of them. I was down to like maybe like 15 of them or so when I put these other fish in. And I always chalked up the deaths to them basically as bad genetics. They're inbreeding. Um, I never put any new lines in there. And I just assumed that's what was going on. Um, but then my rams got sick. Two of them died. And then I noticed a bunch of my platies, which I didn't mention this in the original video, which I forgot. Uh, I had noticed uh, another drop off in population of my platies. So... I knew something was going on other than just uh, bad genetics at this point. That's why I did a bunch of research and I come down to the assumption that I think I had fish TB within that aquarium. Now, I couldn't tell you 100% for sure unless I did some testing, but from everything I've seen symptom-wise, I really think that's probably what was going on, at least for the platies. But so that brings us to today. What did I do? I made that video and I asked basically for suggestions in that video in the comments to see what people thought and what they would do if that was their tank and what they had going on. Um, there was lots of different comments. The majority of them, I would say, basically go the nuclear option and basically tear it down, sterilize everything and start over. There was a couple other comments that after reading them made a heck of a lot of sense and that included not tearing down my tank. But to start off, I guess I'll show you what I did to my tank first. Well, I want the nuclear option. Now, hear me out. When I made this video, when it got released on that one Friday, I had that day off. My intention was to wait at least a weekend to be able to see what everyone has to say in the comments and then make a decision off of that and then go forward from that. But since I had the day off, I just, I said, screw it. I was in that mode and I'm just like, if I'm going to have to tear this thing down, why don't I just do it now? and get this process going so I can get it started and going up and running again soon. So I did the nuclear option. I tore everything out. Um, I took the substrate out and threw it away, the wood out and threw it away, which I'll talk about in a little while. Uh, the fish I put in another tank, which I'll show you some footage, um, and threw away pretty well most of the plants. I'll show you some of that as well. So I went the nuclear out. But that's when I started reading some other comments that made a heck of a lot more sense. So after I tore that tank down and sterilized everything, I sat down and looked at my phone to read some of the comments in that video. And that's when I came across one from someone called Pew Splat. Um, his name is Mike. I will um, link that comment in that video. So it'll be at the top of the comment section if it's something that interests you. I highly recommend it if it's something that does interest you because there's a lots of great useful information in there if you wanna read it from top to bottom. But I will kind of, break down what he had to say right now. Um, so basically how to start it off is there's bacteria in all our aquariums, good and bad. And there's probably fish TB bacteria in all our aquariums as well, but they're at such low numbers that our fish's immune system are able to handle it. So the real question really isn't what type of bacteria killed my fish. It's more where did it come from and why did it happen? But when it came to the platies, I really think they did have fish TB from all the symptoms that they showed, and it was such a prolonged death, like they would die over the last two years. The rams, 
I don't think it was Fish TV, if you want me to be completely honest. Now, reading all this and doing more research, um, I thought maybe at first, because they're more of a sensitive fish, that maybe it took hold of them faster. It is equally as a uh, possibility that it was just a different type of bacteria that got a hold of them. Maybe those two fought and got an injury or whatever the case may be. But I think that's what happened with the rams. But again, the type of bacteria doesn't matter what killed your fish. Um, what did it come from and why is it affecting my fish this way? Um, so what did it come from? Let's start there, I guess. Well, I obviously had cloudy water in this tank and how did I get that? It's probably from too many dissolved organic compounds within my aquarium. Um, that can come from overfeeding your fish, plant decaying, driftwood, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, fish waste and stuff like that. Um, and then that creates that bacteria bloom because the larger microorganisms like the infusoria are coming out and feeding in that, creating that cloudy water and that bacteria bloom. But I'm going to read you what Mike wrote in that comment here next, which kind of interests me. And that was basically he said that this high level of bacteria in the water column is in contact with your fish's gill tissue and is extremely taxing on the fish's immune system. Any bacteria that comes into contact with gill tissue will cause an immune response, whether it's a pathogen or not. So the fact that your water is so cloudy means that there's so much bacteria that your fish are literally running out of immune resources and can't fight off infections. So they succumb to any number of pathogens. This high level of bacteria and microorganisms is also using up oxygen and producing waste compounds that could be increasing the stress level of your fish. Wow, I had no idea about any of that. Um, so yeah, that could explain a lot, but that brought me back then. What's causing the cloudy water? Why am I having that by breaking down those different things? Am I overfeeding my fish? I haven't been currently. I used to feed them every day. Um, I cut down to every two to three days, about a month, month and a half ago. So I'll cut that one off the list, but there's always an overwhelming amount of mom and detritus at the bottom of this tank. And this one, I've been doing water changes just about every two weeks, three weeks tops to try to siphon some of that out of there and it keeps coming back. So when I broke this tank down, the driftwood I think was the culprit because it was all soft and decaying and rotting off of there. And I think that's what was causing all that extra stuff at the bottom to create those dissolved organic compounds. At least that's my, my thinking on it. So after taking that wood out of there, I really believe that had a big reason why. But the other reason in my opinion is like I said with those platies, I had another die off. When I pulled those fish out of there, I only had four platies left. Uh, I started with over 30 over two years ago. When I put that rams and stuff in this tank, there was probably 15 or so left. Now I'm down to four. Where did they all go? Um, I never seen any dead fish. So my assumption is they fell down into the, the rocks and woods behind the tank and then the snails and shrimp ate them. And while well, I'm spiking ammonia and I'm causing more organics within my aquarium from these dead fish that I didn't see. And that's probably also contributed to that cloudy water. So I think that's where that came from that caused that. But now really like wh what do I do about it next? That's really the question. So basically Mike's suggestion was add more filtration. You don't need to sterilize anything. You don't need to take fish out, quarantine anything. It's all about adding more cycle filtration to your aquarium. By adding that filtration, um, an extra sponge or an extra two with uh, more media in there and more surface area. You want to add more basically of, het I, I'm going to kill this name, so I apologize. I will put the name underneath, heterotrophic bacteria. It, it, it's something I didn't even know about. Um, and it goes hand in hand with the nitrifying bacteria. Um, basically, if you're not aware what this is, they, like I said, they work hand in hand with the nitrifying bacteria with the nitrogen cycle. Um, the heterotrophic bacteria basically they'll colonize the filters and the surface area within your aquariums and they consume the DOCs. They consume the dissolved organic compounds. They eat the waste, they eat the decaying plant matter, and they break that down into ammonia and other nutrients for, guess what? The denitrifying bacteria to be able to break the ammonia down and do the nitrogen cycle. So like I said, they work hand in hand. Uh, so basically you can think of it as the heterotrophic bacteria is more of the janitor crew, the cleanup crew. They clean up all the mess and then they create the ammonia and then your denitrifying bacteria is your hazmat team. They clean up the ammonia and they turn it into stuff that's good for your plants and your aquarium, which is nitrates. 
So it's an interesting process. And by adding more filtration, his thinking was you put that in there and that's going, it's not going to happen over time, but you want crystal clear water. The idea is to get crystal clear, clear water, add more filtration, and that's going to be able to clean everything out and put those populations of that bad bacteria, whichever it is, fish TB or whatever it is, back into place. And if the fish have not gone too far off with the bacterial infection, if it is fish TB, um, there is a possibility they could start to get better. Yes, like he said in his comment too, more than likely you're still going to have to medicate the fish with um, medicated food and stuff along that nature. Now some other suggestions too, as he said in those comments are, if you don't want to rip your tank down, um, besides adding more filtration is you could add a UV sterilizer. That will help kind of speed up that process of killing off some of that bacteria. Um, adding an air stone and getting more aeration within your aquarium will definitely help add oxygen and kind of help that cycle go a little faster. Um, like I said, this comment opened my eyes tremendously as to more of the bacterial biology within our aquariums. You know, like you said too in the comment that basically that hetero, I'm going to kill the name again, heterotrophic bacteria, that cycle is quite overlooked when it comes to the nitrogen cycle. Everyone knows pretty much what the nitrogen cycle is, but they don't know what this cycle is. And I said that got me deep diving into it. And I, I greatly appreciate you, Mike, for dropping that comment. It has helped me immensely. And I hope it might be a help other people out there. I know it has a few because I've seen actually another video from another YouTuber um, that was talking about the situation after reading, watching my video and reading that comment. It's helped him figure out his tank and what was going on. So would I have changed things differently if I've seen this comment before I ripped my tank down? Probably. Um, I don't think I would have tore it down. I probably would have removed the fish yet because if the if it was fish TB, like I really suspect that it is within my platys, um, if that infection was already within their organs, there was no saving them. And I have four left. Um, I, just out of precaution, I probably would have pulled them, but I would have left everything else in the tank and I would have just got more filtration, put my UV sterilizer in there and I would have let it go. But it is what it is. This is a situation I was dealt and this is something that I greatly learned from. But what else did I learn from it? Let's turn this camera around and I'll show you. Well, honestly, I learned a few things. Um, one, the importance of filtration. Um, there's more to it than just adding a filter to your aquarium just to uh, make an aesthetic of making your water look crystal clear. You actually want crystal clear water because it's beneficial and healthy for your fish. So moving forward, I'm going to try to add more filtration to my aquariums. Over the next few months, I plan on getting some more sponge filters and uh, for all these tanks to add maybe two to each one. And then my bigger tanks here with my Puffer and my Oscar, I have a bigger uh, filter coming for this tank and I would look into getting another canister filter to add to the sponge filters I already have on my Oscar tank here. So filtration is huge. And that's going to bring me to this tank as well. What do I plan on doing with it? Um, that remains to be seen. I have an idea of what I want to do. Um, but I know what I'm going to do is I have two sponge filters from Aquarium Co-op. I have a, a fine sponge and a cordage sponge. Uh, I'm going to put one of each in here because I've been looking for an opportunity to test them um side by side in the same tank to see how they work i have a couple of each in my tanks anyway but i want to do that in here i know i'm going to put gravel in here um but what i'm going to do with it other than that i'm not 100 percent sure i have a few ideas but that's not going to happen to probably after christmas time because my wife will kill me right now if i tell her i want to buy some fish when she's buying christmas presents right now but yeah i would not be living after tomorrow if i told her that <laughs> so the other thing I learned is that wood. Remember I mentioned, I said, when I pulled this wood out of here, it was all decaying and soft. And I really think that contributed to a lot of that waste at the bottom of the aquarium. Well, I found that to be true in my Shiner tank here as well. If you remember, I had a big piece of wood in here that had a piece of Anibius on. And I was getting so much algae on that piece of wood and that Anibius, I could not kick it. I kept dumping the light down and feeding less. And I was getting so much waste at the bottom, especially within here. And you know what? That piece of wood was originally in this tank before I, re before I reset all these tanks. And so I pulled that out and I got rid of it. And I put a few rocks in here. I got a new piece of Anubias. And guess what? 
that algae isn't coming back. That waste isn't there anymore. So that wood was contributing to my algae issues within this aquarium. Uh, it's been two weeks and I have minimal algae. I have a little bit of black beard it looks like that has started on some of my plants here and a little bit at the top of that sponge um, outflow there that I've had. But there's none on the plants anymore. So that's a big factor is wa watching what type of wood you put in your aquariums. Now, those are ones that I collected from here. I live in Wisconsin out of Lake Michigan on the beaches. I thought they were hard enough woods. Apparently they weren't. So the only woods I've really kept now anymore are, I have some spider wood that's in this tank and that one. I've got a piece of Mapani wood in here in my crib tank. And I have another piece of Mapani wood in my axolotl tank here. And that one I collected from Lake Michigan, but that's hard. But that might go yet, too, if I see issues. But I'm going to try to stay away from the wood a little bit. Go to more uh, just plants and things along that nature, which is going to help reduce the amount of uh, DOCs in my tank by having that wood breaking down. So that's another huge thing that I learned from all this. But the most important thing I think I learned from all this is this platform and to be able to share ideas. And that's what I appreciate more than anything. I think that's probably one of the main reasons I keep making these videos is to share what I'm doing. But I also learned so much from people like you and someone like Mike that made that comment and helped me tremendously. And I, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to help other people as well with that comment um, to try to understand and learn more of what's going on in these tanks. The problem is you can go online and you can research stuff and there's lots of information, trust me. I do lots of digging around, but you don't always get the answers you want online digging unless you ask specific questions and you might not know what those questions are. Like what Mike brought up with the heterotrophic bacteria and more filtration and that uh, fish TB is in all tanks. That's stuff that I didn't come across in my initial investigations or I would not have probably even thought about tearing my tank down but it is what it is and we'll move forward but that information sharing between hobbyists is one of the greatest things of this platform and um, I had, I just uh, appreciate that more than anything else so uh, I think I'll end it here before I keep rambling um, but again thank you Mike for your, your help and fish TB is not a curable disease if it's infected in the fish and it gets within their organs and it gets far along, but it is curable within your tank if you have it to be able to cut those numbers down. And the biggest cure, like he said, and Mike said in those comments, is crystal clear water and to make sure that your fish's immune systems are strong. And the best way to do that is to keep a healthy, thriving tank. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Um, I know I did, and I'm greatly appreciative for it. Um, so that being said, uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If it's something that interests you, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you again next time here at Patty's Aquatics. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time here at Patty's Aquatics. <laughs>